Hi everyone, it's Ray at Whitney Auto again in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where we specialize in Mazda vehicles. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the dreaded Mazda rotary compression test. Uh, what kind of numbers you're looking for, how it's performed properly, and if you're having one done, what you should be looking for or expect. Uh, here it is, rotary compression test. Now I'm going to show you how to do the compression test, both a, a Mazda compression tester and a standard compression tester, but either way, let's look at the other tools you're going to need. You're going to need a 3 8 inch ratchet, you're going to need a 10 inch extension bar, you're going to need a 13 16 inch spark plug socket. You could also use a 21 millimeter socket if you need to, and I like to use a 3 8 inch universal drive socket as well to make it easier. Now here's what your standard compression tester looks like. Mine is a Matco Super Deluxe Compression Tester. It's just mine of choice. Now if you use the standard one, you're also going to need some means by which to read the RPM. Now this is a special service to Mazda Compression Tester made by Kawasaki. There are other producers of this tool, but the most important thing you're looking for here is the four windows with the three different chambers and the RPM reading directly on the same tool. Now I'm going to label the two parts here. You're going to have the pressure transducer and the adapter fitting. The pressure transducer is what's responsible for turning those puffs of air into an electrical signal and the adapter is what's used to plug into the spark plug hole so you can connect the tool to the vehicle. Now Mazda recommends you take the car for a drive beforehand to make sure it's at full operating temperature. Then before you actually perform the compression test you allow the car 10 minutes to cool down especially the exhaust. You want the exhaust and the catalytic converter to cool down for approximately 10 minutes. Now, I concur, I think that's a good idea. You definitely want to make sure the car is fully warmed up. Also, be careful when you're removing your spark plugs because the car will still be hot. We're going to start by removing the two leading spark plugs. Now, the leading ones are marked with an L. You can just think of it leading lower than the ones on the bottom. First thing we're going to have to do to remove them is to take off the spark plug wires. So we're going to do that by reaching in through our wheel well One's a little more obvious than the other. We're going to remove the plug wire, just pulling it off gently on both sides. Then we're going to reach up and disconnect our centric shaft position sensor. It's just a normal connector tab. You can push it with your thumb and wiggle it right off. Now here's an idea of what it'll look like with the tool combination I'm using. Uh, that would be on rotor number one, the one in the front and here is what the ratchet will look like on rotor number two, the one closer to the back of the vehicle. Should look just like that. Now just to hurry things up a little bit, now that I've broken the spark plug loose by hand, I'm going to use my cordless impact just to spin it out quickly. First I'm going to show you how to use the Mazda Special Service Tool Tester to see what proper readings look like. Uh, we're going to use the adapter bit that we had labeled earlier and we're just going to thread that into the spark plug hole. It's a 19 millimeter. We're going to use a wrench to snug it up. And then now that it's snug, we're going to take the pressure transducer with the quick disconnect and snap that onto the bit. This is another good time to put your battery charger on your battery so you're sure you have full cranking speed. It's also not uncommon to plug your special service tool into an auxiliary power source to avoid any interference. Now this is what it's going to look like when we do our compression test. We're going to hop inside the car, put our foot on the floor, and crank the car. And then we have our compression reading. So there you can see how the Mazda compression tester works where you're getting three different readings from each of your three chambers on your rotor and then also your RPM reading. That allows you to compare the three chambers and use the scale to see if you have the proper pressure readings at the given RPM. Now if you're going to use a standard compression tester, remember you're going to want something to read the RPM, whether it be a scan tool or a timing light, something of that sort. Uh, you're going to find the correct hose and you're going to remove the Schrader valve out of the hose. After you remove the Schrader valve, just thread it right into the spark plug hole as you would any other compression test. Next you're going to want to go ahead and connect your compression gauge to the adapter. Uh, you're going to need a helper on this one because the cord's not long and it's not going to store your readings. So you're going to have to get somebody to sit in the car with their foot on the floor and crank it for you. What you're looking for here is three consecutive pulsations to a similar pressure reading. As you can see it's bouncing three steady times. 
Now a chart like this is what you're going to use once you have your pressure readings and your RPM to tell whether or not your engine is in good condition. If you can't see this chart in the video, just Google search RX-8 compression chart. So as you could probably tell, a Mazda compression tester is always going to be favored over standard compression tester. Um, problem is they're very expensive to have, so really the only people that have Mazda compression testers are Mazda dealers and rotary specialists or Mazda specialists. So before you go and pay for a compression test from anywhere, Ask them what procedure they use and what equipment they have to do it. Again, this is Ray at Whitney Auto in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Our website's www.whitneyautorepair.com. We do compression tests here, so if you're local to the area or in Northern Virginia at all, please feel free uh, to swing by, go to the website, contact us, and we'll set up an appointment for you. Uh, also, the subscriptions are uh, very appreciated. If you did find this video at all helpful, I ask that you do like the video because that does help us. Uh, to continue our project.